Be blessed as you watch the ministration of God's servant, Pastor Moraki Olumodimu. Let's just go ahead anywhere you are, online, on site. Go ahead, give the Lord praise. Render the fruits of your lips. The sacrifice of your praise in the name of Jesus. Give him the glory that is due his holy name. Thank him for his marvelous works. Thank you for his graciousness. Thank you for his extreme kindness unto us. Thank you for preservation of life. Thank him. Give him praise in the name of Jesus. Give him the praise in the name of Jesus. Give him the praise in the name of Jesus. Thank him. Let it come from your heart. Let it come from your spirit. Give him all the glory. Give him all the praise. You are a good, good God. We praise you. Maker and keeper of life, we praise you. Our strength, our help, we praise you. The God of our salvation, we praise you. Our Redeemer, we praise you. The strong and the mighty God, we praise you. The God of all grace, we praise you. The Father of all mercies, we praise you. The God of all comfort, we praise you. Blessed be your holy name. Yes, Father. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. Yes, Father. We give you praise, Father. We give you praise, Father. We give you praise, Father. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We give you praise, Father. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. Praise the mighty God, we praise you. We give you praise, Father. We give you praise, Father. We honor you. We honor you, Lord. to their house this morning to say thank you for bringing us to the last Sunday in the month of August. Only you could have done so. Indeed, a thousand has fallen and even ten thousand are arise. For you've been a shade for us. You've been our shield. You've been our stronghold. You've been our strong tower. You've been our unfailing God. We give you all the glory. Please accept our thanks in the name of Jesus Christ. He that is sent of God speaketh God's word. And he that is of God, he had a God. So we ask this morning, Father, that you will speak because your servants are listening. Do that which only you can do, Father. And edify this house mightily by your word in the name of Jesus Christ. Holy Spirit, we can only speak when it is you that gives the understanding. So, Lord, we step aside and we say, have your will, Lord. And we promise to return to you all hands of the glory. Blessed be your holy name, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. If you love the Lord, put your hands together and celebrate in Jesus' name. Let's appreciate TOJ in Jesus' name. Thank you. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, it's a honor and a privilege to stand before a 
father and the faith our senior pastor this morning and i trust the lord that he will breathe on his word and make his counsel known to our hearts in jesus name i turn with you to galatians chapter number six galatians six i will take my reading from verse two and i will read all the way to verse 10 and I'll be speaking on your works matter. Your works matter. There are certain things that matter to God. And your work of faith, your labor of love, and your patience of hope are the things that really matter to God. And today, by the grace of God, I will be looking at how our work really matter to God. Galatians chapter number 6, I'll take my reading from verse 2. The Bible says, Bear one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. For if anyone thinks of himself to be something, when he is nothing, he deceives himself. Verse number 4. But let each one examine his own work. And I'd like you to underline in your spirit or in your Bible, examine his own work. And then he will have rejoicing in himself alone and not in any and not in another verse 5 for each one shall bear his own load let him who is taught the word share in all good things with him who teaches do not be deceived god is not mocked for whatsoever a man sows that he will also reap verse number 8 for he who sows to his flesh will of the flesh reap corruption but he who sows to the spirit with of the spirit reap everlasting life. And let us not grow weary while doing good. For in due season we shall reap if we do not lose that. In the name of Jesus, you will not lose that. Let's read verse 10 together one to go. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all, especially to those who are the household of faith. Thank you. Verse number 9 says, And let us not grow weary while doing good. For in due season we shall reap if we do not lose that. Today, by the grace of God, I will make some initial statements about why our work matters to God. And I'm not talking about just your professional work, even though that is your work. I'm not talking about your 9 to 5. I'm talking about your work as uh, the entirety of your life. I'm talking about your work as your service unto the Lord. Now, there are seven key statements that I need to make about why our work matter. Now, you've read in the Bible and you have seen people have debate at, at different points about the issue of work and, and faith. Some people say, all you need is grace and because you have received grace, you don't need to do anything. And, afford, and of course, it is by grace alone that you are saved. And not of works, lest any man should boast. Then where comes the place of work? And at another time, you have seen people debate and say, you know, to justify your faith, you must in fact have works to show as evidence of having faith. So the debate goes on. And sometimes you don't know where to stand. Do you stand with Apostle Paul? Or do you stand with Apostle James? Paul will say things like, it is by grace alone. And he will tell you, as a matter of fact, that he who was the chiefest of sinners found grace and became saved by the platform of grace. But grace as it is does not negate works. There is a place for grace and there is a place for our work and for as those who we have a robust and strong Christian experience, we must learn we are uh, the nexus where we balance the issue of grace with our work. So by the grace of God, I'll make some initial statements as a foundation for the things that we'll be sharing together. Now, I want to, I want to say seven key truths about our works as Christians. The first truth is that we are not saved by good works, but we are saved unto good works. The first truth is that all of us, we are not saved by good works, but we are saved unto good works. 
And I want to read uh, to us from Titus chapter number 3. Titus chapter number 3. I'll take my reading from verse number 5 all the way to verse 8. The Bible says, Not of works, not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Spirit, which is shared on us abundantly through Jesus Christ our Savior, that being justified by his grace, we should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. This is a faithful saying, and these things I will that doubt affirm constantly, that they which have believed in God might be careful to maintain good works. These things are good and profitable unto all men. Paul started out the discourse by saying, matter of fact, we are saved not by good works, not by what we give or what we don't give, not by what we do or what we have not done, not by our activities. And he made that very, very clear. You see, one of the things that you will never be able to attain by yourself, by your standing, by your effort, is the issue of righteousness. As a matter of fact, if you were to live 500 times, and each of those 500 times, you lived a million years. Now multiply 500 by a million. If you had to live 500 times and each of those 500 times you lived up to a million, you will still not have been able to attain righteousness by yourself. So righteousness is first and foremost an issue of the grace of God and of the gift of God. So the Bible says that not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us. Now, that is the truth. That is the foundation. But Paul went ahead to also qualify. If you go down all the way to verse 8, he says, this is a faithful saying, and these things are we that thou affirm constantly, that they which have believed in God might be careful to maintain good works. These things are good and profitable unto all men. He first of all said, we are not saved by works, and he now said, we are saved to do good works. Somebody say with me this morning, say, I'm not saved by works. Oh, come on, you need to say, say it loud. Say it with an attitude. Raise your hand to heaven. Say, I am not saved by my works, but I'm saved unto good works. Say one more time. Say, I'm not saved by works, but I'm saved unto good works. So the first statement is for us to understand that none of us is saved by good works, but we are saved unto good works. Number two, Good works are evidence, and good work, good works are merely evidence and not means of salvation. Good works are evidence of our salvation, but they are not the means to our salvation. The fact that somebody is doing good works, as a matter of fact, it does not show. It's not the, it's, it, it's not it's, it's not what gives the person salvation. The evidence of salvation, the what shows that you have been saved are the works that comes from your life. So good works are evidence, but they are not the means to salvation. Ephesians chapter number 2 and verse 10 where I read, he said, for we are his workmanship. Ephesians 2 and verse number 10. He said, for we are his workmanship created in Christ for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should work in them. So the Bible says that we have good works to do. There are certain things that God wants for us to work in. So it says that good works in, in themselves, they are not the means to salvation, but they are evidence of our salvation. Number three, the, uh, uh, what that means is that we don't make ourselves Christians just by doing good works. But Christians do good works because they are Christians. We do good works because that is who we are. It's just natural. It's a product. That is what constitutes us. So we do good works because we are Christians, but good works are not the things that qualify us to be Christians. Number three, good works flow from a changed heart. Good works flow from a changed heart. Uh, the first thing that we need to think about as we think about good works is that 
Good works, as far as God, as, as Christians are concerned, are actually the product of a changed heart. Good works come from God. The first request that God makes on you and I is first of all, our hearts. See something in Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 23 and verse number 26. Proverbs 23 and 26. The Bible says, please, let's read it together. It's on the screen. Let's read it one to go. My son, give me your heart. And let your eyes observe my ways. The first thing that God asks for is that God asks for our heart before he asks for our hands. God will always, first of all, request for our heart before he starts asking for our hand. A lot of people have not given their heart and they are so quick to give their hands. And God said, it doesn't work that way. Good works are product of a changed heart. They come, first of all, from the fact that our hearts have been changed by the grace of God. God asks for our conversion before he starts asking for our commitment. And as a matter of fact, there is no way somebody can truly give true Christian commitment where there has not been a conversion. So it is conversion before commitment. So number four, what are, what are we to understand about the works of Christians? Christian good works are born out of love. Uh, they are born out of a love for God and not that God should love us. I'll say that again. Christian good works are born out of a love for God and, uh, and they are not done to make God to love us. Now, the fact that you love God uh, is, uh, is what translates or what evidences or what produces your good works. The good works that you do, they are not a means to buy the love of God. They are actually a proof of the love of God that is in your heart. If somebody gets one passing across to us, if you understand what I'm saying, wave your hand at me. So good works are principally a factor of love. They are the works that, are, that we do out of our love for God, but we don't do those good works so that we can buy the love of God. Our service is love-based. Our service and our obedience are love-based and love-driven. We serve God to please him, but we don't serve God to appease him. We serve God to please him, we don't serve him to appease him. A lot of people think that by serving God, they can appease the wrath of God. No, we are serving God to please him because we love him, but we are not serving him to appease him. One time I had to, by the grace of God, prophetically minister to uh, a lady. And we got into a conversation and... I asked, what church do you attend? And she said, I attend so, 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 and so church. I said, oh, great. And I said, what do you do in church? Do you do anything? Are you a member of the workforce? Then she said, I work at the children's department. And as she said that, something tingled in my heart. Like you just, you know, you just hear this, brrr, something just shook in my spirit. And, as she, and she sat opposite me and God began to speak to me. And God said, the reason why she's working at the children's department is because she's trying to appease me. So four years ago, she had an abortion. And she doesn't just believe that her sins were forgiven. She still felt that, okay, since I had an abortion, my, uh, if, if I've kept the child, the child would have been this age. So she went to the very class. Now, not this church, okay? So don't guess. <laughs> so she went to the class. The very age group, the, you know, where a child should have been. So she said, she serves God there. And God said to me, look, she's doing that to appease me. And what she should know is that her sins has been forgiven. And so I had to tell her and say, sis, this is what I hear in my spirit. Then she said to me, say, are you FBI? I said, this is what I hear. The matter of fact, why you are in the children's department and in that particular department is that you are trying to appease God over a wrong that happened some years back. Because he was the child of a pastor, something led to something and something happened. And for the shame of trying to preserve her father's ministry, she felt that uh, she had to get rid of the baby. And once she did that, that burden, uh, the burden was just heavy on her conscience. And to appease God, therefore, she, she began to serve. And you know, a lot of us tries to appease God. 
But you should know that God has been appeased by the blood of Jesus Christ. God does not need your blood anymore. As a matter of fact, if you, you can't save yourself and you can't save the other person. There is nothing that you can do that will make God to be appeased. What appeased the rod of God on our behalf actually is the blood of Jesus Christ. So good works are works that we do out of our love for God, but not to earn the love of God. There is no work that is sufficient that will make you to earn the love of God. You do what you do because you love God, not because you are trying to earn the love of God. If you understand that, say a big amen at me. Number five, Christian good works are born out of thankfulness and not out of fear. Christian good works, the reason why we labor for God, the reason why we walk and labor for God is not out of fear, but out of thankfulness. See something with me in Psalm 100 and verse number 2. Psalm 100 and verse number 2. Christian service are born out of a heart of thankfulness and not necessarily out of fear. We are not serving God because God will curse you. That's not why you are serving God. You are not serving God because if you don't serve God, God will break your head with a sledgehammer. You are not serving God because if you serve God, if you don't serve God, you will have an accident and die. No, that's not the motivation for serving God. The motivation for serving God is because we are glad that we have been redeemed. We are glad that we have been forgiven. We are glad that we have a relationship with God. We are glad that those of us who were once sons and daughters of perdition, finally we have found, found acceptance and forgiveness in Christ Jesus. That's why we serve God. We don't serve God because we are restless. We don't serve God because we don't have anything to do. We serve God because service or laboring for God is a matter of thanksgiving. See something in Psalm 100 and verse number 2. Please, let's read it together as they give it to us on the screen. Let's read it together. One to go. It says, serve the Lord. Let's read it together. One to go. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with what? With singing. You are not serving God so that God will not kill your child. That is the wrong mindset. And I'm there say that that mindset had been propagated for a long time. A lot of people believe that once they don't do something, God will just touch their business and, and, and run their business down. No, if your business is going down, it's because of another thing. Not necessarily because you are not serving God. If somebody gets to my person across the road, we are must understand that we serve God not out of fear. But we serve God out of a life of thanksgiving. How many of you have, know what God has done for you? How he preserved you. How he preserved your children. How he kept you from dangers. Kept you from evil. How he regenerated your heart. How he gave you life eternal. And you have this confidence that even if the whole heart were to pack up right now, you have a place with your maker. Those are the reasons why we serve God. Number six, good works are called good works. But because they are done for God's glory. They are done for God's glory. Good works are called good works because they are done for God's glory. They are good because they honor God and they serve people. They are good works because they are done for God's glory by God's strength and in obedience to God's command. Everything we do is not for self-elevation. It's because we I mean, we are doing what we are doing as a means to honor the Lord, as a means to bless our generation, and as a means, you know, to communicate divine grace. When you see somebody that is serving God, and you know, it's not because most of the time they just want to do a show off. It's because they are trying to honor the Lord. So good works are grace motivated. They are God-centered. They are faithful out. And they are spirit empowered. Number seven. Good works. Number seven. We determine your eternal rewards. Good works. We determine your eternal rewards. Now there are two questions everybody must have. Please come out of your Bibles and come to the altar one minute. There are, good, there are two things that every one of us must ask ourselves. The first question is, where will I spend eternity? The second question is, how will I spend eternity? 
where will I spend eternity is a matter of faith in Christ. But how will I spend eternity is a matter of good works. How? The how of eternity is dependent on the quality of your sacrifices and your service. We are not all going to be the same in heaven. One time, I was preaching for a man of God in Abel Kuta. And the father-in-law called and said, I want to meet with all of you. Ah, Then they said, ah, Baba has called, Baba has called. You know, so because the, the, the man, the, the father, the, the in-law was actually, at that time he was 92. So, and he had all girls. He had actually four girls. So he sent for the four girls and all their husband. So the man said, well, I need to go to Ibadan to go see, you know, uh, it, it's very unusual for Baba to send for us like that. So he said, and he said, I want all of you to come. So they all came, and the old man began to talk to them. And he said to them, he said, I'm perceiving that I'll be going very soon. He said, then they said, why? He said, because sometime when I wake up in the morning, and I just want to take a walk around the house, he said, suddenly the floor of the house will disappear. He said, and I will see myself walking in the garden. He said, suddenly the roof will also disappear, and all I see are just trees. He said, finally, just this last week, he said, then he said it in Yoruba, I'll translate. He said, what if he lay me one minute? He said, they have shown me my house. He said, so I perceive that I'll be leaving anytime soon. Now, the man was not a minister. The, 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 the man that called his family together wasn't a minister. His, in -law was, uh, his son in law was the minister. As a matter of fact, all his in laws somehow they were ministers. Okay? And so this man was a old Baptist man, a lady in the Baptist church, and he's been faithful. And so God, uh, at one point, God, he had a revelation, and he saw himself. He saw himself in heaven and joining towards a particular building. And he saw the building, and the building was so beautiful. And he said, I like this one. Then the, then the angel that was taking him around said, no, that's not your own. That's actually for the man who prays for you. That's for your pastor. He said, then they took him to the next building that was not very far away from the pastor's house. Say, this is your home. Then the man said, actually, the home was very beautiful. He said, all the things you call building here, they're actually packs of robbers. He said, the real home, if you want to have an idea of the real home, you need to see what I've seen. He said, what? He said no beauty can compare to it. Then he looked at his son-in-law and said, pastors, please, please do your work. He said, don't miss it for anything. He said, that house that I saw and I wanted to go inside, they said, no, that is for your pastor. And those people left and came back to Abelkuta. You know, then I preached the, uh, the, the, that evening and the next morning. How about the time I went back to my own city? Not too long after, the man called and said, Baba has actually gone to rest. Why? Because while he was here, he was filled with good works. There are times that you can know where you are going to. That is a walk with God and a life with God that gives you certain assurances. And you are not fumbling by saying those things. Somebody who has not seen what you have seen or has not known what you have known, we say you are arrogant. But that man was confident of where he was going. And he said, they have shown me in my house and I perceive that any time from now, I will be leaving. Two questions for every one of us. Where you will spend in eternity? And how you will spend eternity. How you will spend eternity depends on the quality of your good works. Now, let me say very quickly, how does God relate with our works? How does God relate with our works? The first thing I'd like you to know is that, number one, God recognizes our works. He recognizes them. The second thing is that God records them. The third thing is that God remembers them. And the fourth thing is that God rewards them. I will go over that very quickly. The first thing I'm talking about, how God relates with our works. That is a relationship that God, that is a way God views, as God, God views your works. 
And how does God relate with our works? The first thing is that God recognizes our works. See something with me in Hebrews chapter number 6. Hebrews chapter number 6 and verse number 10. Hebrews chapter 6 and verse number 10. Thank you, church. Please, can we read together loud and clear? If you don't mind, one to go. For God is, is not unjust to forget your work and labor of love, which you have shown towards his name, in that you have ministered to the saints and do minister. Somebody say God is not unjust. Oh, come on. Say with an attitude. Say God is not unjust. Now raise your hand to heaven. Say, I know that God is not unjust. God is not unjust. God is not a wicked God. God remembers your work. The Bible says that God is not unjust to forget your labor of love. It's not unjust. God is not an unjust God. There are things that God sees that no man sees. There are things that God takes cognizance of that men may despise. There are people that may despise your labor, despise your sacrifices, despise your life, despise your entirety. But God is not unjust to forget your labor. And that gives me confidence that I serve a just God. I serve a God who is very, very just. Yes, men may be unjust, but God is not unjust. Yes, that is a God who is not unjust. And the Bible says that Jehovah, who records all things, is not unjust to forget your labor of love. That's not me you do that God forgets. Number two, the second thing that you must know, I, 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 let me read another scripture, Revelation 3 and verse 8. Revelation 3 and verse 8, the Bible says, I know your works. And I know your works may be a comfort to some people and a trouble to some other people. I know your work is a comfort to the committed. I know your work is a threat to the hypocrites. God said, I know your works. I know your works. I see your labors. I see what people are not seeing. I know your works. May I submit to you, Victory Temple? God knows our works. God knows your work. God knows the time that you have to give an offering, even when you don't have it. God knows the time you have to make a sacrifice for somebody else so that that person can go forward. God sees it. God knows the time you have to give your last meal so that somebody can be comforted. God knows your works. God sees everything that you are doing. He said, I know your works. And may I say to the person who is also charismatic, you know the meaning of charismatic. There are charismatic believers and there are charismatic believers. Uh, for the charismatic believer, she carry me type of thing. God said, I know your works. Yes, I do. I know it's all about the glory. It's all about the show. It's all about the accolades. It's all about, you know, it's all about the out out outward putting up of oneself. God said, I know. You can't fake me. There is nothing a man sows that he will not reap. The Bible said, do not be deceived, for God is no more. If somebody gets him and passing across to you. Number two, God records our works. Not only that God recognizes our works, God also records our works. You have a record book before the Almighty God. Uh, in Esther chapter number two, you know the story. The man Mordecai had, did, had done something very beautiful for the kingdom. He had saved the life of the king. He had done something. And... You know, he just did what he needed to do as a faithful, as a faithful civil servant. He did what he had to do and went about his business. And the Bible says that that deed went into the archives. It went to the records. And one day the king could not sleep. And the king was just, I believe God disturbed him. I believe God took away his sleep. And don't forget, he took all the medication. And you know, the emperors of those days, they had the best of physicians. So all the physicians that attended to him, they had given him every medication possible. He couldn't sleep. Because when God takes your sleep, who is that, where is that medicine that will give you sleep? And so the man said, okay, okay, okay. Give, give me the archives. Let me just read. And as the man began to read, then he came on the place and saw the deed that Mordecai had done. Now see that, that story with me in Exodus chapter number 6. That story, the initial story is in Exodus 2. 
Uh, but for the want of time, let's go to Exa chapter number 6. Now, let me read that to you. He said that night the king could not sleep, so one, so one was commanded to bring the book of the records of the chronicles, and they were read before the king. Verse number 2, thank you. And it was found written that Mordecai had told of Bigtana and Dresh, and Teresh, two of the king's eunuchs, uh, the doorkeepers who had sought to lay hands on King Ahasuerus. Verse 3. Then the king said, What honor or dignity has been bestowed on Mordecai for this? And the king's servant who attended to him said, Nothing has been done for him. And of course, if you read down the entire story, you see how God decided to honor Mordecai for his faithfulness. Now, I want to say this to you. If the kings of this world have their records, how do you think that the king of kings doesn't have his own record? Okay? How do you think that the administrator of the entire universe does not keep his own record? God keeps record. There is a record book over your life. God keeps record. He keeps record. And my prayer this morning is that may good things be found in your own record. May, may commendable things be found in your own record. May things that God can bless you and bless your generation over be found in your own record. In the name of Jesus Christ. Number three, God remembers them. God recognizes our good works. God records our good works. And number three, God remembers our good works. Psalm 20 and verse number 3. Psalm 20 and verse 3. The Bible says, May he remember all thy offering and accept thy bond sacrifices. God remembers. God remembers. And you, re and you see another story in Isaiah chapter 38. Talking about Ezekiah. Talking about Ezekiah. Now let me read that scripture to you. The Bible says, In those days Ezekiah was sick unto death. And Isaiah the prophet, the son of Amos, came unto him and said unto him, Thus said the Lord, set thy house in order, for thou shalt die and not live. Then Ezekiah turned his face towards the wall and prayed unto the Lord and said, Remember now, O Lord, I beseech thee, how I have walked before thee in truth and with a perfect heart, and have done that which is good in thy sight. And Ezekiah wept sorely. Then came the word of the Lord unto Isaiah, saying, Go and say to Ezekiah, Thus said the Lord, the God of David, thy father, I have heard thy prayer. I have seen thy tears. Behold, I will heard unto thy days fifteen years, and I will deliver thee and this city out of the hand of the king of Assyria, and I will defend this city. You remember that story? Somebody just told that man, hey, you have a few days to live. Maybe he had cancer. And it has spread and has got into stage four. And they said he was going to die. Then that man said, ah, ah. Upon all the good works that I've done. He turned his face to the wall. And he began to negotiate his destiny with the Lord. And God who is not unjust. Called back his work. To his, to his, called back his work. You know. For his deliverance. I'm praying for you. That in the season where it matters. Make your work speak for you. Oh dear. I say may your work speak for you. May your work speak for your children. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In the court of God and in the court of man. May your work speak for you. May your sacrifices speak for you. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In the day of trouble and calamity. May your work speak for you. May God preserve you because of your good works. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. When Israel went to battle. The Bible says that every tree that they see. They must cut down. But the trees that bear fruit, they must not cut it down. Because that is the life of a man. May your fruits, the fruits of your work, preserve you in the time of battle so that you will not be cut down. May what cut down others preserve your life. Oh dear, dear, I'm speaking over your life by the mercy of God. May by the mercy of God, may you escape from every evil. Escape from every calamity. Escape from every evil. Escape from every death. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. May the Lord remember your offering in the mighty name of Jesus. In the days when things are difficult, when there is no way of escape,
escape. May your offering speak for you that day in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Ah, in the times when the competitions are difficult, when everybody is qualified like you, may the Lord remember your good works. Hey, I said, may God remember your good works in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The Bible says that is a way that God brings our good works to the table when negotiation about matters of destiny when they come forth. You see why your works matter? Because your works are the fruits on your life that will make you not to be cut down. Ah, somebody had an accident. And please, when I tell you, well, if I tell you a story is researched, somebody had an accident and he fell, let me just say a ravine, and he fell very deep into the ravine. He felt that the old car went very deep. And the man was shouting right there deep at the depth of the ravine. And he was saying, oh God, I refuse to die like this. I am a titer. God, I refuse to die here. I am a titer. And he began to shout it. And as he was screaming it, you know, Nigeria, everybody will just pack. They will be looking at you in your calamity. So people will bring out their phone and they will be taking pictures. And so you say, oh, oh my show. And that was, and that was the other, because nobody could go into the ravine. And they were looking at it. And the man kept shouting. I said, God, I cannot die like this. I am a titer. I cannot die like this. And so man, somebody just came and rolled off his seat. And they were looking at the man. Is this man crazy? You want to go and die with him? And the man rolled off his seat and rolled off everything and removed his shoes and went down deep into the ravine and brought only this man out and after they brought the man out and people were trying to help him they couldn't find the man anymore they couldn't find the one who brought him out there are days that the only weapon of defense you have your only alibi the only thing you can count on are the works that you have done let me ask you what have you done And that's, that's sobering. What have you really done? Because good works, they are remembered. And number four, good works. God rewards good works. There is no work of yours that God doesn't reward. Look at Hebrews chapter 11 and verse number 6. Hebrews eleven six, 6. The Bible says, but without faith. Let's read it together. Hebrews 11, 6, 1 to go. But without faith. It is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. God recognizes good works. God records good works. God remembers good works. And God rewards good works. A man by the name Kenneth Hagin is going to be with the Lord. The one of the fathers of the faith. One time, he just saw money come into his hand. And you know, he just saw people giving him money and, and it was embarrassing. The deluge of money, they were just coming to him. And, he, and as a spiritual man, he knows that when God is sending him money, it's not just for to go shopping the next day. So he said, he began to ask God, why are you sending me this money? Do you need somebody? Is there somebody that is in need that you want me to give to? Is there? I mean, people are just, were just doling him money and it was not $5,000. It was just like somebody calling and saying, you know, sir, I just, we just expect a check of 500000 in the mail. And another person, and God was just embarrassing him with money right, left, and center. Ah, may heaven embarrass you with money. I know your amen will come alive. <laughs> so the man was inundated with money, with gifts. So he began to say, say, why? Then God said, actually, the money is for you. It's not for anybody. But he said, God, but you know, I don't need this money. He said, some other people need it. God said, actually, it is because a giving that you did so many years ago has come into remembrance before the judicial court of heaven. What happened? Those were the days, the days of Genetekin were the days where we didn't have as much as uh, technology as we have it these days. 
as much as uh, amenities as we have it. And so there was this preacher, a friend, you know, uh, from another state. And the man was broke. And it was during Christmas. The man didn't have anything to feed his family with. He didn't have any resources. And in those days, pastors were blessed or giving money to more during Christmas. So, well, can I take it? So this man called up and said, you know, Brother Egi, is there anything I can do for you? You know, there is no gas in the house. My family is, um, we, are, we, are, we are in a very bad shape right now. And can I take it? He said, okay, please come over. Just come over. And so the man came and can I take him vacated his pulpit for the man for one week. So every day can I take him we take offering and give it to the man. And so the allowance that the church gives Kenneth Hagin every month, I mean at the, at the December period, he decided to add everything together and gave it to this man when he was going. He said, well, on top of the offerings that we have collected, I'm also giving you my Christmas allowance. Please, my brother, go get some heat in your house. Go fix the house. Go take care of your family. And can I take you, sent the man away. And he himself began to believe God for God. I said, God, you know, <laughs> I've given everything. I don't have anything. And he began to believe God. And he began to pray and say, well, Lord, I've ministered to the need of another person. I trust you to minister to my own need as well. Now, I know somebody will say, love your neighbor as yourself. Don't love your neighbor more than yourself. Are we? <laughs> You need to go deeper. <laughs> so the man gave everything. And can I think he said, that very Christmas, his family had to live on soup. They had to live on soup just to make another family comfortable. And by the time he had grew years after, now more than 30 years after, God now came. I said that thing that you did, has been brought before the judicial court of the Elohim. And in response to that, we are sending you money. May you do something that will be a memorial. May you do something that the heavens can call a decision over. And when the heavens call their meeting, who is that man that will stop it? When God calls a meeting on your behalf, who is that one that will hinder it? When God reacts to your giving, who is that person? That we limit God records and God rewards, and that's what you must know. I close with you very quickly. How does God reward? Number one, God rewards quickly. Number two, God rewards. God, number one, God rewards quickly. Number two, God rewards openly. Matthew 6, Matthew chapter 6, verse 17 and 18. Matthew 6, 17 and 18, very quickly. Let's read it together, one to go. But thou, when you fast, anoint your head and wash your face. Verse number 18 now. So that, you're, so that you do not appear to men to be fasting, but to your father who is in the secret place. And your father who sees where in secret will reward you openly. Will reward you openly. I want to speak to somebody, get ready for open rewards. Oh, come on. I say, get ready for open rewards. I say one more time. I say, get ready for open rewards. God rewards openly. Some things are not, some things are, some things are not gifts. Some things are rewards. Christians know about gifts, but they don't know about reward. Reward is what you do in response to something. Reward is what you get in response to something that you have done. Gifts are things that are given to you for doing nothing. For example, if Pastor Adeyemo looks at me because he's anointed and he said, Pastor Burak, take this $10,000. That is, I thought you would say amen to that. Or maybe he needs $10,000. <laughs> but that's a gift. I didn't do anything for him. But it's a different thing. If he says, can you do this for me? Do this professionally for me and I will in response to your service, give something to you. Now, there are times we get gifts for doing nothing. And there are times we get rewards for what we have done. Miracles are gifts. But the blessing is a reward. Oh, your money has finished. Let me stop. God rewards openly. 
And God rewards quickly. I'll keep the last one for some other time so that we can pray. Stand to your feet and let us pray. We are not saved by good works. But we are saved unto good works. We are not saved by what we do. But we are saved to do the things of God. I'd like you to raise your right hand to heaven this morning. And just speak to the Lord. Good works are not out of fear, but out of love. I want to ask the Lord and say, Father. Oh, please pray with me. Say, Father. I thank you for the gift of salvation. Father, I thank you for delivering me, for saving me, for forgiving me, for redeeming me. Father, I thank you for all that you have done for me. I give you praise. Now go ahead and give him praise in the name of Jesus. Thank him for all the things that he has done for you. Give him praise in the name of Jesus. Somebody lift up your voice. Give him praise in the name of Jesus. Lift up your voice, give him praise in the name of Jesus. Let's just say, Father, thank you in the name of Jesus. Thank you, thank you, thank you for all that you have done for me. Thank you for mercy over my life, mercy over my family, mercy over my household. I cannot buy it, Lord. I cannot buy your goodness. I cannot buy your grace. I cannot pay for everything that you have done for me. Not by the works of righteousness, but by your grace alone. Lord, thank you for your grace over my life over my household thank you for your grace over my family thank you lift up your voice don't keep quiet thank you for everything he has done for you how he kept you from your mother's womb up to this time you were not bedridden you didn't come to the world with your problem yes he kept you you were born well you were gifted well you were well loaded you came fully by the hand of the lord it is a product of mercy some were born blind not because they sinned, not because of anything. Son came with one affliction or the other, but that is not your experience. So lift up your voice. Not only are you not afflicted, your children are not afflicted. Can you lift up your voice and give him praise in the name of Jesus? keep quiet don't keep quiet don't keep quiet do not keep quiet church do not keep quiet victory temple buoy do not keep quiet lift up your voice lift up your voice give him praise ah our children are doing well let's give god praise for them let's give god praise for them let's give god praise for them give god praise for your house give god praise for everything he has done for you don't focus this morning on what he has not done. Focus on what he has done. The Lord has not allowed you to mourn in your family. Death right, left and center, but you have escaped. Not only have you escaped, but your household has escaped. Your children has escaped. Ah, we give you praise, Jehovah. Lift up your voice. Two more minutes. With a loud voice, with a clear voice. Those who are troubled, the Lord deliver them. Those who are afflicted, the Lord deliver them. Those who are sick, the Lord delivered them. The Lord has been merciful to us. It is of the Lord's mercies that we have not been consumed. Because his compassion faileth not. Lord, we are here to say thank you for your compassion. Thank you for your goodness to us, O oh God. We thank you for your grace in the name of Jesus. Take a song of your own and sing to the Lord from your heart in the name of Jesus. Take a song of your own and sing to the Lord. Bless him this morning in the name of Jesus. Lord, we are grateful in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord, nothing can buy your grace. Nothing can buy your goodness. Nothing can buy your love. Nothing can buy your help. Nothing can buy your forgiveness. Nothing can buy your deliverance. Nothing can buy your support. Nothing can buy your beauty. Thank you for the beauty of the Lord our God upon us. Thank you for your graciousness upon us, O oh God. We are grateful in the name of Jesus. I go out, I come in, no police harassment, 
no stray bullets lord we thank you in the mighty name of jesus we go to difficult places lord yes we come out with rejoicing because your hand defend us lord i give you praise in the name of jesus when i was down you lifted me when i was helpless you gave me help when i was hopeless you gave me hope when i was sick you healed me when i was oppressed you delivered me for thou, O oh Lord, are the glory for me. You are the shield for me and you are the lifter up of my head. Thank you for all that you have done for me, O oh God. Thank you for putting an end to shame, putting an end to reproach, putting an end to my battles. Thank you for fighting my battles for me. Thank you for defeating wickedness on my behalf. Ah, my head you have anointed with a fresh oil. We give you praise, Jehovah. We give you glory, Lord. We give you thanks. We give you thanks, Father. We give you thanks. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Please open your eyes and look at me for a minute as we take the next prayer. What are the things in your records? God remembers. God recognizes. God records. And God rewards. What are the things in your record? What are those things in your record? Or, do you, or maybe your book is empty. And God wants you to fill it all with good works. Listen to this. My covenant with the Almighty is that so long I have this life, I will serve Him. So long I have this agility, I have this vitality, I will serve Him. So long I have this strength, I will serve Him. A time will come that you will not have all the strength. But now that you have it, what are you doing? I'd like you to lift up your voice to heaven and say, Father. Oh, please pray like somebody who wants to pray. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I receive grace to do good works. From henceforth, lift up your voice, say from henceforth, I shall never be lazy, I shall never be backslidden in the name of Jesus. Say, Father, lift up your voice, say, Father, I renew my dedication for your works in the name of Jesus Christ. Now go ahead and pray in the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus. Go ahead in the name of Jesus. I don't want my records to be empty, I don't want my records to be nothing, I don't want my records to be to be weak. Father, help me in the name of Jesus. Revive me this morning. Renew me this morning. Renew my capacity for good works. In the name of Jesus Christ. All the things that I've been doing, I will not backslide from them. I will not take a backstage in the name of Jesus. I receive grace and strength this morning, oh God. Yes, to labor for you in the name of Jesus. Every spirit of weariness will come against them. The Bible says we must not be wearied in what doing. Lay your hand upon your head and pray. I come against weariness of every type. Weariness of the mind. Weariness of the body. Weariness of the society. I come against it in the name of Jesus. I receive fresh grace this morning. Fresh devotion fresh energy fresh strength in the name of Jesus let the spirit of the Lord well up on the inside of me let joy and rejoicing break out of out of my family in the name of Jesus Christ blessed be the name of the Lord in Jesus mighty name we are prayed open your eyes and look at me two more prayers and we are done open your eyes a lot of us are distracted and you know when i mean distraction distraction can come in form of a battle you are struggling with your health where do you have time that's a distraction it's a distraction you are struggling with your marriage that in itself is a distraction it's a distraction or you are struggling with papers that in itself is a distraction Okay? Or you are struggling, you are struggling with sin. It's a distraction. Struggling with one thing or the other. And a lot of us are distracted. I'd like you to speak to the Lord. Father, heal, heal me of every distraction so that I can focus on your good works. 
in the name of Jesus. Can you lift up your voice and say, Father? Oh, lift up your voice. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, take away every battle. Take away every distraction that I may serve you, that I may love you, in the name of Jesus Christ. Lift up your voice and pray that prayer. Father, we pray this morning that you will take away every distraction from us, whatever is distracting us from serving you, whatever is distracting us from being devoted, whatever is distracting us from our first love, every form of distraction, Lord, take it away. Take away that distraction, take away that problem, in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, take it away to the glory of your name. Thank you, Jehovah God. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Finally, I want us to pray. Look at me. Open your eyes. Let's pray for Victory Temple Bowie. That every one of us will go back to good works. If somebody gets him, I'm passing across to us. You know, we know ourselves, so there's no need bowing. A lot of us have stepped back from our good works. And we need to pray that corporate grace, that corporate anointing to rest upon this house. That our hands may be renewed. That our love may be renewed. Some of us, our heart are affected. And because your heart is affected, you can't be as devoted as you used to be. Some of us, because of offense. Because of offense. You are offended. And please, hear me, hear the word of the Lord. I'm speaking on an unction. When you, you are you're offended. You are offended. And because you are offended, you go back to your shell. But here is the problem with offense. You will be the only one to stand before the Lord. Not the one who offends you. You will be the one to give an account. Not the one who offends you. I want you to lift up your voice to heaven this morning. Father, heal me of every offense. In the name of Jesus Christ. So that I can rededicate myself. In the name of Jesus. Heal this house, Father. In the name of Jesus Christ. And help every one of us. To go back to our good works. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you gracious father. In Jesus mighty name. We are prayed. Open your eyes and look at me. You are not saved by good works. In other words if you die in church. And there is no Christ in your heart. It's meaningless. Don't invest your life in the wrong direction. Don't let religion rob you of your rewards where it starts from is from you having a regenerated heart it's for you having a relationship with the lord and i want all eyes closed all head bowed this morning just in case there is anybody here that you are yet to give your life or your heart to the lord or your heart has wandered away from the lord i want to say my brother please pray with me and commit me to the hand of the Lord. I'm happy to pray with you. I prayed for you before coming. And I believe God sent this word to you. So that you will not be like, uh, like, like Cornelius. Who was just serving. And yet, he was far from the kingdom. Anybody you want to give your life to Christ? Or you want to rededicate yourself to the Lord? Anywhere you are, can you lift up your hand? Anybody like that? I'm happy to pray for you. And to commit you to God. Father, we thank you. We give you all the glory. Oh Lord, we ask that you will revive us unto good works. You are a God who records. You are a God who rewards. I pray for anybody here whose reward has been held down by any power of hell. I pray for anybody who has been discouraged. I pray for anybody whose reward has been delayed. Father, prophetically this morning we speak. Let our reward come quickly. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray that you will reward us openly to the glory of your name. Reward us with good health, with sound mind, with things that money can buy, and with those things that money cannot buy, to the glory of your holy name. Thank you, gracious God, for the answer. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. If you've been blessed by this ministration, we'd love to hear from you. Kindly connect with us on the following social media platforms on your screen.